Well, if you have ever wondered about what it might be like to make the transition from doing your garden design work to designing on a computer, there's an easy way, and that is to use some software which you can download from the internet and try out for free. And it's called GCAD Plus, and here is, or here are, some examples of designs done with GCAD Plus. Let me just maximize our view of this one and scroll out just a little so you can see a rather nice design for links between two buildings and moving across into an access area with a quite narrow pergola. And you see that the design has some sort of the feel almost of hand-drawn examples. So what I want to illustrate now is how you can create just experiment with these sorts of drawings and create a few of your own just to get a feel for how you might make that transition. Well, the application that created all those drawings is called GCAD Plus. And if you search for GCAD Plus in your search engine, you'll be able to find a link to its web page. Just go to the Downloads folder, select Download GCAD Plus, and that'll bring you to this page and you can scroll up or down the page. If you're working in the metric area, recommended is to just click on that link there. But if you're working in the US, you would want uh, the US version. The only difference between the two is that symbols that you bring in, you don't have to draw your own. You can use symbols that are already in the program. They are sized differently in the metric version. And you bring one in, it comes in at a metre or a thousand units in canopy diameter. If you bring a symbol from the metric version in, it comes in three feet or three units in canopy diameter. That's the only difference between the two versions of GK+. Plus. So just click there, download it, unzip it, and then run the setup file. And you'll have on your desktop a link to GK+. Plus and a little symbol will look similar to the one you see at the top left of screen. Well, this is the screen you will see when you start GCAD Plus. To start your investigation, click on File and New and choose one of the templates that we deliver with the software. We'll pick this one, Front Garden, which is very easy to understand what's going on. The key issue when you move from designing on the board to designing in a computer is that in the computer everything's full size. That means that if I pick the measure tool or distance tool, I can measure from one side of the site to the other and everything in the building trade in the metric environment is in millimetres, so that's 16,963 millimetres across, very close to 17 metres, and I can measure down this direction as well. Notice that the cursor, it's called, pointer locks to the vertical. So this is a vertical distance. It's measuring 12 meters from where I started to the front of the house. So everything is full size. So it's, it's a model that we can manipulate really, really easily. We can control our view of the drawing. If we wanted to zoom in on a particular area, just position the, the mouse and click, and then that pops up what's called the cursor, crosshair cursor, and then roll the wheel of the mouse away from you. Similarly, roll the wheel back and you zoom out. And if you hold the middle wheel of the mouse down, it is possible to pan the drawing. This drawing has had some work done on it. Individual symbols, which come from the symbol library. If I select that symbol there, notice how on the left hand side it's had a botanical name and common name associated with it. It's all had, also had some shadowing applied. The shadowing is put on a, a layer called shadow that happens automatically and will turn that layer off. Notice there are lots of layers here including a dimension layer. So if we turn the dimension layer on now, it will dim, we will see a whole series of dimensions that telling us that the width 
of the entry path is 4,504.5 metres, that the entire site is 16.88 metres in width. So the dimensions are put on automatically. You just use a dimension tool. This one here is the linear dimension tool, and I can use it to snap or jump to a particular point. Say I want to jump to the end of that line, come over here and jump to the end of that line, and I'll even come to the midpoint of that line there, and there's our new dimension. And you see that happens automatically, and we can pick the dimension. The text is not quite centrally placed, now it is. So everything's very malleable, you can move things around nicely and nice and easily. So we also can run um, a plant schedule and that can be run automatically. In this case I've run a particular custom one, but let's just run the standard routine. We'll, maybe we will add an extra plant. That's, that symbol is Acacia Cognata. So we've selected it. Let's copy it and we'll paste it over here. We won't apply another code to the middle of the symbol, but we've added one more Acacia Cognata. And if we look at it, there are six there. So let's run the botanical schedule again. And to do that, we go to GK Plus, Plant Schedule, Plant Schedule, draw the standard schedule. I'll make the height of the text 150 units and a corner point. Just come under here and draw it much the same size as we did before. And the schedule is drawn again. And can you see the number of Acacia Cognata has automatically been updated and given us the seven. So once you get your symbols tagged correctly, uh, then plant schedules update really, really quickly. It's even in this case, the designer here, and it's a company in Melbourne called Stately Paving, they've actually taken symbol, a whole lot of symbols, not that one, <laughs> and this one is the symbol for the Geraldton Wax. So if we can, we can put that and drag that in as well, and we'll be able to update the schedule. So I hope that gives you just a little bit of an idea of what can happen. And that space that we've been working in is called model space. Let's go back to layers and turn off the dimension layer. And then we'll go into what's called a layout space. And there is our design with stately pavings logo. And we can see it all on an A2 landscape sheet. I can select the it's called a floating viewport and there it is there just showing in white on the side and we can plot to a particular scale if we want but we always like to include a scale bar as we've done down here in the bottom there's a five meter scale bar to give people an idea of size you can print to a fixed scale if that's what you want but that is a floating viewport on an A2 size sheet. So to print it, it's simple. File and print, and we can print it to, say, a cute PDF writer. It's a landscape view. We can switch to an A2 sheet if you wish. But there's nothing if you have an A3 printer associated or even an A4 printer, you can, st you can just print it. It's going to an A4 now, and we can OK that. So now we can preview landscape. Cute. It's going to write to a PDF file using some software called a Cute PDF Writer. We can OK it, and we'll just preview it. So you notice a flashing area. That's what we're going to get when we print the drawing. So I hope that gives you a brief introduction to what it might be like if you swing from drawing by hand to drawing on a computer. Remember that uh, you can download and run 
G-Code Plus at no cost and work with it. all these templates are there. The only thing you won't be able to do is to print the drawing, but all of the rest of the tools that are here will operate. And you can see they're pretty extensive, as is the library of standard plants. You can just scroll through these various symbols and include those in any of your design work.